Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. A bizarre night on I-96 in Novi. Take a look after a man crawls out of the woods onto the freeway and attacks. Day one of Aretha Franklin's visitation has come to an end with thousands of fans waiting in long lines to pay their respects in a way only Detroiters know how. Also mid-Michigan getting hammered by severe storms and some of that moving closer toward us. In fact, we'll start tonight at 11 with parts of the viewing area being under a severe thunderstorm watch. The rest of us will get showers and thunderstorms overnight. Andrew is in for Ben tracking it all. Andrew? Kimberly, those are, and Kimberly and Devin, those areas under severe thunderstorm watch include Genesee, Lapeer, St. Clair and Sanilac counties until 1 o'clock early Wednesday morning. So over the next couple of hours, it is quite dicey. In fact, we still have those showers and thunderstorms moving through the areas like the thumb. In fact, parts of the thumb, including Tuscola and Huron counties, were under warnings, but they've been allowed to expire within the past few minutes. In part, this line was responsible for that severe weather. It's now diminished somewhat, but you still have decent downpours, moderate to heavy rainfall throughout Sanilac County, including Sandusky, stretching down to parts of Lapeer County, moving into portions of northern St. Clair County. The leading edge of this line is on the move and will make it to areas like Fort Gratiot and eventually head over to Port Huron between now and about 1120. So over the next 10 to 20 minutes, it's going to race across St. Clair County. We have more shower and thunderstorm activity right here in South Central Michigan that will move through the rest of the viewing area during the during the overnight hours. Maybe not reaching severe levels, but we still need to be on guard for heavy downpours overnight and frequent lightning. We'll stick around tomorrow morning for the rush hour. What about tomorrow afternoon? More on that and the rest of your week's forecast in minutes. Andrew, and get your updates on the weather first thing in the morning with Local 4 News today starting at 4.30 a.m. Well, the first day of Aretha Franklin's visitation just wrapping up at the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History. The night capped off by a private ceremony. Jermont Terry is live there tonight, and Jermont, quite a day. Kimberly, quite a day and quite a night as well. That private ceremony just concluding with the uh, sorority sisters of the Delta Sigma Theta uh, sorority, which are behind me. I can tell you that people came from across Detroit and across the country to pay their honors to the Queen of Soul tonight. The fans came from near and far, passing the time in the long lines, listening to the tunes they will keep forever. And the first of three days of public visitations, people made a point to show appreciation. I've loved her my entire life. I've been, I've been a fan from this high. You can't be this close to history and not come out and show support. And love for the Queen of Soul is what made this wait well worth it. Take Brayton Wilson. He drove four hours. From Gary, Indiana. Brayton knew Aretha and her music touched the souls of many. But standing outside the Charles H. Wright Museum, he discovered she's still touching lives, even in death. You see all cultures, you see all religions, you see no prejudices, nothing but love, you know. That love continued into the night. More than 12 hours later, we saw people still filing into the rotunda. Once inside, a different mood as they saw Miss Franklin lying gracefully in a red gown inside a gold casket. After the last fan of the night left, 600 members of the Delta Sigma Theta sorority marched into the museum for a private ceremony for their sorority sister. Oh, she was loved by Detroit. You know, this is her hometown. People just love her. Aretha Franklin became an honorary member of the Delta Sigma Theta sorority, and I, you know, these members came out tonight, as you heard me mention, 600 strong. Pauletta Wallace from Flint, Michigan, you made a point to drive to Detroit tonight to honor your sorority. Why? Yes, I had to be here. This is just an incredible honor to be here to reflect on Aretha, on her life, on what she means not only to Detroit, but to the world to our sorority, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. I had to be here. And obviously you were not alone. You know, they represented and most definitely you saw from the amount of people that came out throughout the day, thousands, and we are expecting even more tomorrow into Thursday. That's the very latest reporting live in Midtown at the Charles H. Wright Museum. Jermont Terry. Local 4. Indeed. All right, Tremont. And our week-long coverage of tributes to Aretha Franklin continues tomorrow morning. The Reverend Jesse Jackson will be live on Local 4 News today at 630 to share his memories of the Queen of Soul.
New tonight, a man crawling from the woods onto I-96 in Novi attacks the EMS crew trying to help him. One of those paramedics is in the hospital. Mar McDonald is live along the freeway where investigators have spent the better part of the night. Mara? Kimberly, take a look behind me. You can see we still have an active crime scene out here after what has been a wild night on the freeway. Drivers trying to get home were stunned by what was unfolding in front of them. Police all over 96 West before Novi Road. Now, MSP tells us EMS was called to that area of 96 and Meadowbrook because drivers saw a man crawling out of the woods and onto the freeway. So EMS pulls up, the crew in the ambulance sees him and gets him into the rig. That's when he attacks them. Police say stabbing one of the EMTs in the neck and chest area. They get their attacker out of the ambulance and lock the doors. Novi police see what's going on, roll up and take him into custody. MSP is in charge of the investigation and officers spent hours on the side of the freeway looking for any items he may have dropped into the woods. Back here alive, MSP is telling us that both the suspect in this case as well as that EMT who was injured, both taken to the hospital. They say that suspect is suffering from some sort of mental illness. As far as that EMT goes, they say he has non-life-threatening injuries. In addition, investigators tell me they found the suspect's car parked at the mall about half a mile away, and they're trying to piece together what would cause him to leave the car in the mall parking lot and then end up here in the bushes, uh, which they are still going through looking for evidence. We're live in Novi tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Okay, Mara. Yeah. Well, police trying to figure out what happened inside a Warren home where a man was found dead. The body was discovered in the home on Joseph Street in the Glenwood Trailer Park. Police believe it may be a homicide that they are investigating. Few details about the case have been released thus far because police say the investigation right now is in its early stages. We'll stay on it. In Clinton Township, police are searching for 26-year-old Robert Marzeka in connection with the two people found in a shed at a mobile home park. Two victims have been identified as 18 18-year-old Danielle Marzeka and 19-year-old Saren Chad. Police say Robert is Danielle's older brother. Police spent the day going door to door looking for clues. They've been searching for a possible motive. Marzeka was last seen driving a 1999 white Ford E250 van. Uh, we've even got the license plate number. It's DGM 7658. DGM 7658. Five, eight. Police would appreciate a call if you can help. Former MSU gymnastics coach Kathy Klages is expected to turn herself in on Thursday. The attorney general's office originally gave her until the end of last week to turn herself in. Klages is accused of lying to police about when she first learned about Larry Nassar's abuse. She claims she found out about the abuse in 2016, but witnesses say they reported the abuse dating back more than 20 years. If convicted, she could face up to four years in prison. And Larry Nasser has been moved to a prison for high profile inmates. Nasser is now being held at a federal facility near Orlando, Florida. For the past few weeks, Nasser was behind bars in Oklahoma and before that in Arizona. The move comes one day after Judge Rose Marie Aquilina denied Nasser's request for a new sentence on his state convictions. Third grade teacher is facing charges in connection with flashing a woman in Ypsilanti. Troy Miller is a teacher at the Ypsilanti International Elementary School. He was officially charged yesterday. Police say Miller stopped his car to ask a woman directions to a park, and when the woman got closer, Miller allegedly exposed himself. It is unclear whether he'll be teaching while his case goes through the court system, but he is due back in court next month. A fiery crash involving a suspected drunk driver shut down a freeway this past weekend. The crash happened Saturday night on southbound I-75 just north of Rochester Road. Police say a driver rear-ended a car and the car spun out and hit the median and ran off the road before catching fire. A witness helped get the at-fault driver out of his car while it was still in flames. Police want to caution people that drunk drivers can be on the roads at any time of day at 7 p.m. on a Saturday, so that's kind of remarkable. It's, you know, you're driving down the freeway at 7 p.m. It's not a time that people typically think there'll be drunk drivers on the road, but these things happen at all hours. So um, it's important if you see someone driving erratically that you call us and we can get out there and hopefully stop them before something like this happens. The driver should be charged in the next few days. Vice President Mike Pence on his way to Michigan tomorrow. He's going to be here to campaign for Republican Senate candidate John James. Pence will be in West Bloomfield to help raise money for James. James, of course, trying to unseat Democrat 
Debbie Stabenow in the Senate. Meanwhile, we, we've learned the two have agreed to two debates before the November election. One will be in Grand Rapids, the other in Detroit, and the debates are pretty much back to back, scheduled for October 14th and 15th. However, some of the details on those debates are still being worked out. You might be gearing up for football season. Tonight, it was all about hoops in Inkster. Officers and state troopers played against children in the community. The event was a collaboration with the Inkster Police Department and the Basketball Cop Foundation. Children enjoyed basketball, free food and ice cream. The goal is to connect cops with kids and have some fun in the meantime. Uh, the equipment used tonight will stay with the children in the neighborhood. And if you can play ball with a hat, tie, and the utility belt, <laughs> so you do we're impressed. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Uh, parents might already be thinking about help as students return to school. New tonight, we'll show you the app some are calling the Uber of tutoring. But first, an officer punches a woman at a bar and she gets arrested. A bizarre twist in this story coming up. But first, the devastation in Puerto Rico. Loss of life nearly 50 times greater than the initial death toll it was reported from Hurricane Maria.